Hello and welcome back to the final whistle brought to you by the Rugby Connection podcast. Well, you look at the jerseys if you're watching on YouTube. We are back with my boyhood club. We're wearing the country that I support with an absolute legend of both. Currently got 53 Scotland caps, made over 180 appearances for Edinburgh. Living legend and he just seems to get better and better by the game. It's WP now. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? I'm good, Murray. Thank you for having me. And yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's good to be on on you. I I can't wait. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't. I've lost track of how long we've been planning this, but it's all worth it. And <laughs> we're just happy that you're here. So now, glad to be on it. Glad to be finally get on the on the podcast. Good. So first question we ask, we ask all our guests this just to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, what actually got you into rugby in the first place? Um, it's a good question. Um, it's probably back in South Africa, everyone, every kid is probably doing it. It's just part of part of growing up. Um, but yeah, if I need to, if I think back for me, it's like I haven't done because I came from a small town, I haven't done much rugby probably until I was hmm, um, 13, 14. So yeah, so just do on a, on a, on a farm, farm school. So yeah, play with your mates, obviously, but not really into like, yeah, like what you would done under under nine till whatever. So yeah. Oh, that's, that's fair. There's a lot of players that are actually getting into a bit a lot later now and still getting a massive career. So, never, yeah, never... no, yeah, no. There's there's always time. I think I've I've always believed, and I look at my career. There's always there's always time to grow into rugby. It's not something you just have to have to start as a as a kid. Otherwise, you will fall behind. There's always time to catch up if you work hard. Exactly. Now, were you always a prop? Have you, have you always been a prop, or did, were you like a fullback at fourteen? Or <laughs> no, uh, I've I've started as a hooker as when I was fourteen. Um, it's just because I didn't know what anything to play, and I was a bit more chubbier than the than the back. So I've I've just choose choose the position. But yeah, it, it was it's where it started. So yeah. Oh, see, not too much of a difference, and so you. No, not, not too much. Though, so that's good. yeah. Did you play any other sports growing up, or, or was it just rugby later on? So, so like yes, I played a little bit of cricket. That was not not really something I I done it for the fun. But um, the main thing that I, and rugby wasn't honestly wasn't wasn't a big thing for me. That that became later on. Um, I've done in the school where I was was tug of war a massive thing, and, oh, and that's what I've yeah through my school career I've I've done that I've, yeah so that's that's the that's the sport I was actually focusing on. That's pretty cool. I've I've never heard of like like a tug of war like being a, a main sport. That's no, that's really cool. I, I like that. Yeah, no, it's massive in South Africa, especially in in the high schools. That's 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 still a uh, it's it's still a big thing. So and then after that, if you go to SA, SA schools and stuff, and then you, they pick a they pick a team, and then there's usually a competition over here in England that all the every everywhere in the world come together, and then that's a massive like a massive competition over here. So yeah, well, that's pretty cool. See, learn learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think many people forget you actually played Super Rugby before you came across to Edinburgh. What's the biggest difference in the two styles? Because obviously you say like Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere is totally different. So it's it's not. I would not say it's a massive difference. Um, I think 4G pitches probably change a little bit of of the difference of wet pitches, muddy pitches, and and it's just wet. Um, I think 4G pitches starting to change the thing, but there's mass, there's definitely a bigger focus on set piece in the in over here than in Super Rugby. Although if you look at Super Rugby now, there's 
you can see there's there's also a big focus in, on on the scrums and lineouts. So I don't think it's definitely faster super rugby. It's definitely when I were back there, it's definitely um, a faster game. They don't they don't want your forwards to have a push over try or a, or a big scrum. They want the ball at the back and they want to play. So yeah, um, that's probably the biggest difference I would say is it's it's around the set piece set piece area. That's fair. And now you did mention the, the muddy pitches. Do you miss the muddy pitches? Oh, it, it sometimes sometimes make the make the playing ground a bit more even. If you go if you go on on, on the wet or wet surfaces um, on the grass and stuff, I think it's. But but if you're on a four G pitch, it's it's just yeah. It, it's uh, the playing surface is the same. It's it's. It's if the if the team is a attacking team, there's no disadvantage for him. Um, so yeah, so you can you can obviously feel the difference when you scrum on a 4G pitch and when you scrum on a grass pitch. There's a massive difference. So yeah, there is there is things, but yeah, for I think the 4G pitches is probably for the better over here. So yeah, oh, that's that's interesting because I know that some players love them, some players hate them, and I think it's just. It's kind of like Marmite. Uh, so. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it is part of it. And I think if you look at injuries, yeah, maybe there is bigger injuries on the 4G pitches and players get probably a bit more injured. But yeah, I don't know. I can't. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a guy who plays the rugby and yeah, it doesn't matter where it comes to. Yeah. That's, that's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what actually drew you into coming to Edinburgh in the first place? Oh, it's just the opportunity. There was, if I look back at at the Cheetahs that year, so obviously the Springbok coach was Heineke Meyer. It was just two years before, of just after the World Cup, and obviously he came across around all the all the unions that time, and and obviously he picked his what let's say a squad of 40, 45 players, and. I was not at that stage. He Ortirand was our forwards coach, and he said to him, "I'm not in his plans at that stage." And yeah, and or at that stage was really honest with me, and and I and he said he can give me something at the Titas, but if if he be honest, I would look for something different. And yeah, Edinburgh was the team that came across. So yeah, I think we can all say it's the best decision. <laughs> well, I hope know. so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just you're embedded into like Edinburgh rugby. And I think you've been in part of I would actually say possibly the most important time because you played at Murrayfield, you played at Meyer side, you've played at the dam, you've kind of always been on that move, even as still one club. So are you happy now that we've we've got an official home? I know uh... <laughs> Obviously, it's always something that we knew as players. That's the thing that short. That's that the problem for a club is that almost that home to say that's our place. That's our that's our place where we play and we can make that our fort, our fortress. That's the place we're gonna defend. And yeah, obviously, we could see that difference it made to the team and just the just I think the fans to buy into it and yeah, we can see the supporters love it so. Yeah, it's probably it's probably the best thing that could have happened to the club is get their own pitch. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, you've seen me, so, so, so <laughs> it, it just feels. I mean, I've I've seen the boys play at Murrayfield when I think there was like three thousand there, and you could almost hear a coin drop, and it's just. Yeah. I know the boys always give it their all, and there was some special things there, but it, it just feels. Totally no, it's different. different. Yeah, no, hundred percent. No, it's. I, I think it's. It's not just for the players. It's different. I think for the for the for the fans, it's also different. It's like you, it's three thousand in the eighty thousand seater or whatever. It's not. It's not. It's not the best. So, but yeah. So you know, I'm. I'm pleased that. Yeah, that everything is now. Every Edinburgh got got their home now, and we can build on this. Yeah, I'm, if you're happy, I'm happy. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, got um, a question from Cam, who's one of the co-hosts. 
I'll, I'll ask the question first and I'll explain why I think he's asked this. So he's asked the best thing at the Bry. Right, okay. I might, I'll have to explain. He's actually born from Nelspreet. Nelspreet. Yeah. yeah so. so he probably asked, yeah, the best thing. I would I would say steak on the on the braai is the best thing probably on the braai but yeah there's also a lot of other things you can put on a braai that's really good so yeah I will stick with a steak then fair enough I'm guessing a, a braai is like a barbecue then yes that is that so yeah it just, yeah he, he put it in and I was like I don't know what that is he was like yeah <laughs> WQ will know what it means I was like yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's... Like, I'm actually a South African born but loves in Wales. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. It's no. It's a braai is nice. So it's yeah. You can put almost anything on a braai and it comes out good. So yeah. Fair enough. Um. He's also he's he's chucked in another question. Who is the best Safa in the squad? Because obviously there is a lot of South African Cohesions in Edinburgh and Scotland. So who's who's the best? Apart from you. <laughs> I don't know. It's everyone probably have that. The special, the speciality that they bring to the to the team. Um, but if you go like um, bring something different to that to the changing room and always always on I don't know how he's doing it, but always on freaking on a high almost. It's it's probably Pierre. He's probably the man that's probably. Yeah, is is makes a difference in the changing room and stuff. But yeah, no, everyone is 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 bringing something different. But yeah, he is a different different guy. So yeah. Well, I've I've been lucky enough to speak to some of the boys on the show before, and I always try and get dirt on whoever comes on. <laughs> I can't find we can't get any dirt on you. Nobody gave me anything. All they said was he's a great guy. I was like. But I know this. I know he's a great guy. I need something. I need a juicy story, though. No, nah, there's no juicy w- stories from this guy. No juicy stories about WP. So no. the record is completely clear. <laughs> oh, the boys is just scared. That's why. But yeah, That's let's exactly keep it that right. way. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I do have a question though that came yes. up the last time we spoke to an Edinburgh player. Who is the strongest in the team now? Charlie Savala said. It would probably be Shuri, although he said in your prime you would probably lift him some, some serious weights. So no, 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 I would I didn't lift that serious weights. Um, um I would probably say Squee is probably yeah. There's a couple of guys that that are giving him a go, but just okay. his speech, yeah, no, just his mentality of not giving up to be the strongest. Um, I I think probably him, but yeah, um, it's 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 different. I must say, it, if you talk about front or squats and front squats, Pierre is there. If you talk about a bench pool, then I need to put Dewey's name in there. Um, so yeah, so that's that's different. But overall, I think Pierre is definitely yeah the man the man in the gym. So yeah, fair enough. And uh, where where would you put yourself? At this moment, right at the bottom, I'm just work. I'm just working with the bands at this moment. Keep the body going. Um, I've done the art works when I was younger, so now I'm just, I'm just working with just keep the body, body in shape, and that's the stuff I do now. So I'm right at the bottom. So yeah, oh, you're too modest. <laughs> no, I'm honestly no, I'm no, I'm just yeah. honestly just do yeah. the do the do the light weights now. So yeah. Fair enough. I'll, I admire the honesty, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a few fan questions in as well. Alfie Patterson has asked, who is your favourite Edinburgh teammate? Oh, I must say, I don't have a favourite. I like uh, I, I, I like to work with everyone, but the the old guys are, are, the, are definitely the favourite. So, if you, like Gilko and Stuart McAnally, it's... it's just good to sit with him around the coffee and stuff. But yeah, I I must say I don't have a fan favorite. So yeah, so I, I I'm I'm just I'm just yeah the just yeah almost facilitate everyone. So yeah, no, so I'm the squad father. So I say that. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Peter Thorburn has asked, 
what are your ambitions after finishing playing? That's a good question. Um, I, I am at that stage now that I need to think more about, about that. But yeah, if I, if I can get my way, I would probably sit on a farm and farm. Um, but yeah, uh, I will probably after this last two or three years, probably scrum coaching and stuff grow on me. And I would probably love to, after rugby, go into that type of thing, work with, work with props and work around the scrum and stuff. I love that. What kind of animals would you farm or would you just hit all animals? No, I think it will be probably sheep and, in, in, yeah, sheep is the main thing that that's where I grow up with is, is with sheep, so, yeah. Oh, cool. Interesting. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Robbie Brown, 88, has asked, who is the best scrummager you've ever went against? Sure. I have plenty in my lifetime. Um, I would say, say if I say Super Rugby, there was quite a good um, white cockat from the Crusaders who played for New Zealand. I, he was really good. He gave me my first lesson when I was up against him. Um, so he was, he, after that one Crusaders game, I was almost thinking, what am I doing here? So, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, over here, yeah, Kian Ely, yeah. If you go against Pierre in the um, in training, if you go against Buan, there's a lot of there's a lot of good blue sets out there at this moment. I can't really put one one guy in the in the bar in the basket, but it it's it's always a challenge to get to go against anyone in the league at this moment. So yeah, fair, that's fair enough. Um, I'm gonna change I'm gonna change it up a little bit just because I'm, I'm yeah. really, so. Who is your dream front row partner? So you've got your tight head, you've got a hooker and your loose head. You can pick a loose head from present day and the past and the same for the hooker. Right. So I will go with my 2015 partners, Alistair Dickinson and Ross Ford. I love that. As, the, as those in the past and present, probably Stuart McAnally. And yeah, say Pierre at this moment. Yeah, it's, yeah. What about anyone that you've not played with? Just anyone in the world. Anyone out? Anyone out there? Yeah. Sure. Huh. I I must think about the attacking Lucet. I like somebody who's aggressive. Who will that be? Maybe Stephen Kutsoff. Nice. Maybe oh, one. Mm-hmm. Maybe one that yeah that I would say and. Yeah, if I need to think outside just Edinburgh, then I would say probably, I must say, a guy who's a, a hooker that scrums against it's really tough is probably the Stormers. Uh, Stormers hooker is it Bongi? Bongi, no. yes. oh, yeah. He's at the Sharks now, but yeah. yeah well, he said the Sharks, but he was at the Stormers at the stage. But yeah, I think those are two. Do that you would probably like to have next to you as well. So yeah. I mean, just scrum penalties go lower. <laughs> all, in, all in your favor on that end. <laughs> yeah, it would be would be good, but yeah, so nah. Um, what is your favorite memory in an Edinburgh top and in a Scotland jersey? Sure. You Scotland jersey. You could do top Scot- three too many. Scotland jersey probably. It, it's probably a good and a bad. It said was too far the 15 quarterfinals was really a good, a good memory, but also, yeah, lost in the last minute. It's tough. Um, and then obviously, the first time we won the Calcutta Cup at, in England was quite, was quite special. So, yeah, so there's, um, after this, there's good, there's really good memories, especially the first cap for Scotland was was never thought that would probably happen. But yeah, um, in the Edinburgh jersey, yo, it's been so long now that I can, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's obviously the ones that you play Toulon that we won and probably Montpellier that we won that people never thought we even got a chance. Um, that's probably the nice ones. The final we played, 
was it at the stoop against was it Gloucester yes. in the challenge in the challenge cup that was probably a good uh, a special um special moment as well so yeah yeah you know, I can I can go on the whole night about a special moment in the in 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 the Edinburgh jersey but yeah so but yeah it, it would be good to have if just to left left one more one one cup like one one league or whatever one one trophy in in that Edinburgh jersey there yeah. I mean never say never I think we are yeah. I know the I know the league table will say different, but I think we're not far off. Because yeah, yeah, no, you yeah, I I think as a team we are not far off. I think it's small things. It's it's yeah. just it's just that things that that needs to probably click for other teams that doesn't uh, yet for us. But I think we are a, we have a good base to base to work on. So yeah, I th- I don't think we are far off. We. We just need to stick stick to the guns and yeah, work hard and yeah, good cool Some, Something special of that will happen. I've yeah. said it for for Scotland as well. I th- I could feel something coming. I don't know what it yeah. is. I know, <laughs> I know it's a good yeah. thing. So. No, it's it's true. Um, I think both places is in a in a good place. So yeah, so it, it will be. It's it's just about time. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's our time now. We're we're just we're just shot. Thanks. No, it's 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 <laughs> it's true. It's true. We do we do do something. So yeah, exactly. Um, one more question just before we go into a little bit different. Yeah. Any advice you've got for youngsters wanting to get into being a prop? Um, first thing is probably you need to be willing to put your head in in dark places. That's the first thing you need to. You need to make up your mind and, and know it. It is definitely one position in a in a on a rugby field that you need to work hard. There's no hiding place. There's no place that you that you gonna if you want to make it, you need to work hard in that position. Um, then it's then it's just the small things. It's like your your neck strength, your core strength, your focuses. What yeah, and then probably if you later on get in the gym and. Yeah, it's it's just overall you need to be um you need to be mobile, you need to be yeah, it, there's a lot of focuses, but but one thing I would say if you want to be a come a, a prop and you need to be willing to do go in places on the rugby field. There's no other one wants to do that. So and that's the and that's and that's probably the short and the long of it. It's I've got plenty of advice. Do this, do that. Yeah. Eat right, do this. But if you don't make that hard decision of right, that is what I want to do, and I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna work hard at it. It's probably then not for you. But if you can make that decision, you will have a. Uh, uh, that's honestly, I think there's there's plenty to work. Then if you can make that decision, and then the other stuff, the the the, the scrum stuff, the 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 development stuff that will come then but yeah mm. for me if I can make device that's you need to make you need to make your right for the for obviously to work hard so yeah yeah no I absolutely agree with that I love that I mean I've never been great at propping so it's it's not for me anyway but I gave it a go I don't <laughs> I I try it just I just felt yeah. like what you said that Put your head in dark places, and I didn't like those dark places. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's probably the one thing of a, uh, but yeah, that's the that's the thing I like about the, of, of the rugby thing is like every there is for every person there is a special place in a rugby team, and and everyone brings something different to to that team, and that's why it's such an awesome sport, a team sport. So yeah, no, I I completely agree. I've always said rugby is for everyone. Doesn't matter what size, shape, background, has and nothing matters. Just if you enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. If you if you enjoy it, it's the best sport to be involved. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. No, hundred percent. So we're gonna go into something a bit different now. We're gonna to get to know WP. It's actually VP, isn't it? It's not double. Yeah. It yeah, double, it? yeah, it doesn't matter. I've got so many 
so many um uh and now like how they pronounce my name so yeah so that's fine anything i'll, I'll be proper i'll i'll, I'll call, I'll call okay proper. all right so, okay so we're getting to get to know vp as a person so favorite style of food or is it the braai probably a braai steak and chips fair enough fair enough best stadium to play in and you can't say Murrayfield or the dam because they are obviously the right answers um probably the France stadium this weekend that's a start to France yeah something like that yeah just have a the vibe and stuff that the the French supporters create is quite amazing too fair enough um favorite song or music genre Oh, I'm not a. I'm Afrikaans boy, so I'm just listening to Afrikaans stuff. So I don't have a much of a music music fan. So yeah, so I'm just listening what what's playing. Fair enough. Um, favorite film? Hmm. I don't know. The missus is choosing the films always, so I it's probably a, a girly film. So I don't know. Um, what what film? Would I say I honestly I like the the Rocky films back in the day, so that's probably the, my go to. So yeah, no classic classic films. Love them. <laughs> if there was going to be a film on the story of VP now, who are you getting to play you? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Yo, who will play me? I think I need to play myself. Otherwise, I don't think anyone else will. Will be able to play me. Um, nah, I need to come back to this one. I don't That's know. fine. Take your time with it. It's all good. We'll go back to that. Do you have any tattoos? Do I have any tattoos? Yeah. Yes, yes, on my finger. My mistress's Look. name. Oh, nice. Would you get any other tattoos? No, definitely not. The only reason I ask is because I've got tattoos. So I like. It's no, I, no, it's way too, I must say, this was probably the 15, the longest 15 minutes of my life, just to get this on my finger. It was, yeah. it was probably the sorest thing in my life. I, I, well, yeah, so no, I would never get one again. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird feeling, like, I hate them getting done, but I always want to go again. No, it's, it's I would, no, there's no chance I will go ever again in that place, yeah. So it's, it's almost like rugby in a way. You get a big hit and you get straight back up and go again. No, it's definitely not like <laughs> rugby. No chance. No, I'm happy to go every time again for a rugby game, but to go back and just to get a different tattoo, there's no chance. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, favorite pizza topping? Um, yeah, I like toppings. Um. Everything almost chicken and pineapple cheese. No, you said you said the bad one. <laughs> the pineapple, I know, and ever on top as well. So yeah, so now I like to mess up my pizza. So yeah, fair enough. I'm not fair a, I'm not the Italian boy. So yeah, so I like it doesn't matter. Just chuck my pizza. Like yeah, check in, check it, chuck it on. So, yeah, fair enough. So wait, do you put pineapple on a burger? Yes. No, no, VP, you were doing so well. <laughs> oh, why? I don't know. It's just every time we get guests on from like Southern Hemisphere, they always say pineapple and pizza, pineapple and burgers. And I'm like, no, don't do it. And like, no, you have to try it first. It's, like, so, it's just so juicy. It's just so nice. Pineapple is so good. I'm going to have to cave in at this point. I'm going to have to try it. Try it. Try it. Too many, too many guests have told me to try it, so I'm going to kind of have to now. Just just have a go. You will never oh, turn back. Yeah. Just just for you. Even <laughs> if it's just for me, so try it. I will do. Um, Favourite or go-to social drink? So, like, you and the boys have a big one. Probably, a, probably a nice beer, cold one, Budweiser. Budweiser, nice. Yeah, that's good. Not really. No, if I 
if I if I just want to enjoy something, I I really like a shandy. So okay. I would just sit and drink a drink a shandy. So yeah. Fair enough. Uh, the the most common answer I used to get was brandy from South Africans. Was brandy? It was a big thing. I did back in the day when I was younger, but it's uh, it's not a no. Nah. It makes you strong. It makes it makes you a different pl- a person, brandy. So I don't well, like that. Well, st- nothing wrong with the shandy. They're very refreshing. No, I like it. I like it. It's really. Does it, nice. to, does it have to be Budweiser as your shandy? No, no. I anything. So no, I just yeah. Fair enough. Maybe we will need to get on the shandies one day. Yeah. We're happy, happy to do that. Yeah. Um, your favourite thing about Edinburgh, so like the city of Edinburgh, not just the team? Um, I must say the castle is probably unique for me. It's like where in the world is in the middle of a freaking city, there's a massive castle and it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is, it is probably the, the unique thing for me, if I need to say it about Edinburgh. That's fair. And what would you recommend as your favourite thing to go in Edinburgh? Like, where do you like to go on your days off for with the family? Ah, oh, usually go to a soft play. Can I recommend the soft play? <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's, my, that's my off days now. It's a soft play. So, um, yeah. So, um, no, I must say, we. We like to just to go for walks and stuff. So we are in the Pentlands and stuff. So we take the kids out and, but yeah, spend some time as well in soft place. So that's probably my go to on a, on a, on a off day. I could yeah. see you getting right into the softball. Area yeah, no, well. do the slides, everything. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you're currently binge watching on like Netflix or, or Prime that you recommend? No, at this moment, I think me and the missus likes to watch like um, how they make do houses, makeover houses and that stuff. Yeah. And so, but at this moment, we watched the F1, the okay. F1 series. Yeah, so that's quite cool. And I've recently watched the, what's it, um, golf one, big, is it? Oh, big swing. Or yeah, yeah, big swing or something. So yeah, so that that's but yeah, that's that's at this moment what we are watching. Nice. Um, sticking to Netflix, is it weird like going into camp with all the cameras everywhere, essentially? Oh, not not really. They they probably try to stay way out of your kind of out of your way. It's it's probably the the. The main guys that's mic'd up and do all the stuff for Netflix, and I'm I'm just here in the back background. So no, for me it's fine. It's it's just something probably that if if you can see what it done for F1, then hopefully hopefully it can do the same for for rugby. It, rugby definitely needs something to get get more viewers and more more people that interested in, in in rugby so for the for the game yeah it, anything to get get rugby out there and promote rugby so no, I agree with that I think the one thing rugby needs and it, it, keep, it keeps coming up in conversations a video game a proper video like you've had we had rugby away and it was like a work of art and we've had nothing since. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Everyone is everyone is saying that. So, no, I don't know. I don't know who's gonna who's gonna bring out that 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 one thing because it's always freaking football. They just, I know. Yeah, they just do everything right. So, yeah. Do you know how much I want to recreate your famous try against Leinster? Do you know how much I want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So no, I would also love it. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. Um, so, if anyone's listening. Get us a rugby game. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, because FIFA's boring. Nobody likes the football games. <laughs> well, they do, but that's that's besides the point. No, yeah, it's yeah. No, I must say rugby. Yeah, rugby is falling falling behind a little bit. They need to. Yeah, they need to be done more for the game as well. So yeah. 
No, I completely agree. But I think we could talk. That's a whole different com- well, Yeah, no, that's a whole different as well. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, what is, or where, sorry, is your dream holiday vacation destination? Probably Mauritius. Nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a go to place. So, yeah. Anywhere that you've never yeah. been that you would like to go? Um, Probably, I think, I think Greece and the Maldives and that place is, that's always something that, that looks on, 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 on pictures, look, look really nice and always something you would like to go and see. So yeah, that's hopefully on the, on the bucket list. So yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Hopefully one day. Um, One thing that you have to do, but you absolutely hate doing it. Uh, can I say change nappies? Yes, because as a dad, <laughs> I can vouch for that. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's I can't think of something I need to do that I don't want to do. Um, fitness, I need to do <laughs> fitness. That's probably something that's not all the props would like, but it's something you need to do. So, yeah. Fair enough. I'm going to flip it then. One thing you love doing, but you don't get to do it often. Um, outside the box, I would say farming. Um, I can't get enough on the farm. So that's probably one thing. If I need to say rugby, then I can't think about anything that, yeah. Can't play, can't play week in, week out. So yeah, we anyway play. So yeah, I know that's probably outside the rugby. Is probably spend more time in the farm. That's what I would say. That's fair. Good answer. Do you have any hobbies away from rugby and and farming, obviously as well? Um, not really. I must say the kids keep me keep me keep me well busy at this moment. So there's no time for think outside outside that this moment but yes that's yeah yeah i mean you got you got four kids, four. You? four yeah so four keep me keep me well busy so yeah one's enough i have one yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah so now it's it's good they are good but yeah that they they are demanding sometimes well, yeah. he is now obsessed with rugby maybe okay. not as much as dad but I mean, there you go. That says it all right there. <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> I can't watch rugby with him, though. He is obsessed with the people's champ. He is obsessed with Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> so for oh, any no. whether I'm in the stadium, whether I'm watching the game, it doesn't even have to be an Edinburgh or Scotland game. It could be the most random game. It could be like Leicester Tigers versus Clermont in the Champions Cup. <laughs> And Carter is sitting watching the TV going, where's Shui? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I must say he made a, made a good impression in the, on, the, on the fans. So, yeah, no, he's a fan favourite. So, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't need to hear it for the 80 minutes. <laughs> no, that's, I would probably be the same. But, yeah, it's... It's, it's, it's a it... constant. Like, as soon as the ball kicks off, yeah. it's like, <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, so yeah, so yeah, yeah. So he's in trouble next time I see Shui, he's in trouble for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Final question for you today one thing you'd like to be remembered for? It doesn't have to be in rugby, it can be in rugby or and just in your lifetime as well. Uh, probably, I would say, a hard worker. Just to, and yeah, to be there for somebody and always want to help somebody else to be better. So that's that's probably one thing. If if people need to think about me, that's that's what I would like them to say. He was like I was a hard worker and and I was always there to give advice and yeah. Well, I love that. I I would say genuine. As well, I would chuck that word in there just yeah, because. No. Yeah. 
I, I dread to think how many people stop you for a picture or a favour or could you do this, can you do that? And you've always been really mm. great with me and my family. So even when it is, whether it's win, lose or draw, you always sit and like a five minutes chat, obviously one day hopefully get a few beers and chandies behind that. But yeah, like just it's always great for, from me but, as a fan growing up. Watching I think uh, yeah, I think it's as a as a player there's always something you need to somehow give something back to your fans. It's it's like they come and support you. It's and it's not always that supporters have that opportunity. And I think that's the one thing that the dam also creates is that little bit more intimate. It's like players can walk past them, players are closer fans are closer to and you have that opportunity to have a quick photo after the game or to have a quick chat and say hello and and I, I think for for us as players it is it's really important to build that and to keep that bond with your with your fans it, it is something that that we couldn't for a long time probably was was lacking because it was just easy to go into the changing room or the people were standing outside and it was there was just nothing, and it, it, I think that is the one thing that's really nice about where the club is now. It's like that intimate with the players and the and the and the fans, and and that's and I always I will always take a extra minute or so to just give back to the supporters because without the supporters, if the dam is empty. Then who do you play for? So yeah, so that's really important to to be. To give back to the supporters as well. No, I love that, and I, I don't know, I know what else to add to that. <laughs> the, the book is now closed. You've absolutely smashed it, and again, I cannot thank you enough for agreeing to come on. All the best, and I'm not just saying this as a as a Scotland fan. I'm saying it as a impartial podcast host. That all the best for the remainder of the, of the Six Nations, and hopefully see you back at the dam very very soon. Thanks, Murray. Thank you for having me. And yeah, it was really good to chat to you. So yeah. No worries. You're welcome back. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. This has been the final episode with Steve Now, and you'll see you next time.